Episode 131 Liam's Granddaughters What? Jacob was stupefied. This is the last thing Jacob wanted in his life. He already had enough rumors going around the college about him dating different women. He could already imagine the next one. Jacob is dating a set of twin sisters. If you don't want us to take the classes, we won't. We will just keep you company every day, Julia said, misunderstanding Jacob's expression. That's not what I meant. I was just surprised. Jacob shook his head immediately. Yesterday, we paid our respects to the Dragon King and the Princess. Tonight, we will pay our respects to Grandma, Jade said. Grandma? Jacob froze for a moment before he realized that they were referring to his grandmother. No, no. He hurriedly stopped them. I will find a time to introduce you to her. Jacob was terrified of introducing his family to any more dragons than he already had. His grandma would definitely have a lot of questions about two young girls calling him their master and themselves his maids. As you say, master. Jade smiled sweetly at Jacob before walking toward one of the academic buildings with her sister, hand in hand. After a moment of consideration, Jacob crossed the campus and returned to his dorm for books. The room was empty, and he guessed that Sam must have gone for his morning jog, while the others had probably left for breakfast. It was still pretty early when Jacob got to the classroom. He had carried the Sword Shadow Scroll with his books and had enough time to study it before anyone else came and disturbed him. Jacob took a seat in the back row and began to read the Technique Scroll. With his experience with the Spirit Concentration Scroll, he didn't find the content too difficult for him. He finished reading the Thin Cultivation Technique Scroll in half an hour, and he had a general understanding of the cultivation method which was to turn the five elemental essences in his body into sword energies. He must turn the sword energies into solid ones and increase their strength gradually. The fantastic part about it was that he could have five sword energies circulating in his body at the same time, which he could do as he pleased. The most important thing to keep in mind with this technique was that he had to make sure that the growth of all his five elements was uniform, as General Arthur had mentioned before. As the cultivation progresses, the five elemental sword could be split into countless small sword energies. A real master could casually release thousands of sword energies and condense them into solid physical swords. If they were used according to military strategies, they would turn from a majestic rain of swords into all kinds of sword array formations. Jacob was positively thrilled at the prospect of holding so much power one day. He couldn't help but think how majestic he would become. On second thought, the description of the scroll was a bit far-fetched. It would be a great feat for an ordinary cultivator to condense one elemental pillar and gradually break through into a higher realm. However, this technique instructs one to cultivate the five elements simultaneously. If a cultivator had a weaker understanding of any one of the five elements, he wouldn't make any progress at all. Like the boards that form a wooden barrel, the five elements must be the same height to contain the nature essence. Any weakness in any of the elements would stop the progress. Jacob forced himself to memorize the technique scroll. But before he could review it, the scroll suddenly turned into golden light sparks and vanished. Stunned, Jacob realized it was an anti-theft mechanism designed by the clan. Any scroll would turn into golden light sparks and return to the array formation on the bookshelf in the profound cultivation palace after one reading. Before he could ponder on it more, students began to file into the classroom. Jacob's friends finally appeared, with dark circles under their eyes. Sam seemed to have come directly from his jog as he was still in his athletic clothes. A few girls sat in the front rows while the guys gathered around Jacob. All the guys in his class were eagerly talking over each other, asking him questions. 
Hey, Jacob, who were those girls yesterday? Why did they call you Savior? Did you really have dinner with Susan the other night? How are you suddenly pulling all these beautiful girls? They crowded around Jacob's desk. Jacob was exasperated. It seemed that the rumor had spread fast last night, and now they all came to him for confirmation. Breaking news! Ryan rushed into the classroom. One of the two beautiful girls is named Jade, and the other is Julia. They are both freshmen in the filmmaking major. No way! If they are freshmen, how come we didn't know about them? The guys turned to Ryan and questioned the credibility of his news. I'm not finished yet. The one thing that Ryan hated the most was people doubting the accuracy of his information. He continued, They just registered a couple of days ago. It's said that they postponed the registration due to sickness. Now, the guys were all convinced. It's not like Ryan ever gave them false news. They turned to Jacob immediately and said, Hurry up! Tell us how you made their acquaintances and why they called you Savior. Jacob had no choice but to answer, I don't know them well. One day when I was crossing a street, a car drove straight toward them and I dragged them to safety before the car could crash into them. The guys believed his story, lamenting, What a lucky guy you are. I wish I could be as lucky as you. Ryan raised his hand to stop the guys' chatter. I have yet to tell you all the juiciest parts of the news. Those two girls are Vice Principal Liam's granddaughters. All the guys quieted down at this information. According to the rumors, just rumors, Ryan emphasized the word rumor before continuing, they came to the school yesterday in Liam's car. Jacob's heart lurched, amazed that the twins had attracted so much attention to themselves after being at the college only once. Awesome! By being friends with his granddaughters, you have now connected with the vice principal. The guys yelled at Jacob after a silent moment of astonishment. Go away and stop gossiping. Jacob waved them away. If only they knew that he was already connected to Liam in a way that these guys couldn't even imagine. The guys settled down when the teacher came in and the class began. Jacob... I hope you can lend me some of your luck with girls. You seem to have a lot of it lately. Jacob's roommate leaned toward Jacob and whispered. Sitting in the front row, Kathy focused her attention on the lesson and seemed oblivious to the guy's gossip. Jacob was starting to take notes as well when his cell phone on the desk vibrated. He picked it up and was surprised to find Sophie's message. I hope she's not asking me to help her cheat on her test again. Jacob thought, while clicking open the message. His face had already adorned a smile without even knowing the content of the text. My first class this afternoon is P.E. What's your schedule? My schedule? Why? Want me to come to your school again? Jacob asked back. He would definitely go over to Sophie's school if she asked him. The opposite, actually. I was thinking of skipping the rest of the day. I could come over to your college, meet Susan, and probably sit in on your basketball practice. Sophie sent another text message. Sounds good, but I don't have basketball practice today, Jacob replied. But I want to watch you play. The message was accompanied by the puppy eyes emoticon, which made Jacob chuckle. Let me see what I can do about it. Jacob smiled, thinking of Sophie watching him practice. It suddenly dawned on him that she was still uncomfortable with the sisters. The purpose of visiting Susan was to find an ally against the potential danger. Your school gate will be locked in the afternoon. How will you get out? Jacob sent a text message to her. I'll climb the wall, Sophie replied. And with that, it was decided that she would come over to meet him. Episode 132 Lucky Jacob
Jacob put down his cell phone and lightly bumped Sam, who was beginning to doze off. How about we go to the stadium and play a match after lunch? Sam looked at him in astonishment. You're offering to play a match? Um, yeah. You see, the match is the day after tomorrow. We should get in as much practice before that as we can. God knows that I need it. Jacob put on his serious face. If Sam had known he was only offering to play a match at the request of a girl, he would probably have killed him with his contemptuous look. Good. We'll go over together after lunch. Sam agreed. Since he had witnessed Jacob's shooting, he had some expectations for Jacob's performance in the match. Hearing they would play a warm-up match, their roommates wouldn't miss the opportunity to watch. The news spread, and Ryan and the others all decided to go. Finally, even Kathy, sitting in front of them, knew Jacob would play basketball in the stadium after lunch. After class, Sam and his three buddies went to the cafeteria for lunch, and so did Kathy and her friends. Coming out of the building, Kathy walked her bike with her friend, while Sam and others walked behind them. Looking at Kathy's back and her crisp white shirt, one of the guys lamented, It was a surprise that Kathy's the younger sister of the captain of the basketball team. She is definitely multi-talented. At the comment, the other three guys looked up and watched Kathy from the back. Sam also agreed with the statement, but didn't say anything out loud. If the guys had kept their mouths shut, Jacob would probably have had a chance with Kathy. These guys were just jealous of him, and their gossip ruined the opportunities they had with each other. At this thought, Sam cast a sympathetic glance toward Jacob. Kathy's cell phone rang. She dug out her cell phone while continuing to walk. Dad, how come you're calling me now? Jacob's ears perked up. What are you talking about? Has Jakey visited me in the past couple of days? Kathy raised her voice, and Jacob could almost feel how her heartbeat picked up at Jakey's name. Dad, what are you talking about? Walking several meters behind Kathy, Jacob's heart began to pound like crazy. Really? Still on the phone, Kathy stopped walking, and her voice sounded excited. You mean he will come looking for me in a couple of days? Does he know my name? How is he now? Oh, don't tease me and tell me now. Kathy stomped her foot anxiously. Sam and his three buddies glanced at her in passing. Surprise? What surprise? But he didn't come. Kathy yelled over the phone. Jacob looked back and saw her frown and the anxiety and hope on her face. His father's identity is also a surprise? Dad, what on earth are you talking about? Kathy was getting mad at her father as he was not giving her the information that her life depended on. Hello? Hello? She yelled at the phone and looked at it disappointingly. She looked shaken. What's the matter? Her friend asked with concern. I don't know, Kathy answered in confusion. Her eyes looked far away and it seemed she would be distracted for the remainder of the day. They all entered the cafeteria and bought their meals. Kathy still looked unsettled. While she waited in line, she checked her cell phone expectantly, which told Jacob that her father had not told her everything. Maybe her father wanted to make it a surprise for her when he found her. Our fathers are really treating this as a game. If only they knew the amount of anxiety they were putting us through, Jacob sighed. After lunch, Jacob and Sam walked to the gym, and all the other guys followed them. On the way, they saw Kathy, riding her bike, was also heading in the direction of the gym. They entered the stadium and saw that Kathy was talking to Kyle on the outer edge of the court. Captain, Jacob wants to play a match today, Sam called Kyle. Good. Go warm up first, Kyle answered, before turning back to listen to his sister. Jacob could guess what Kathy was telling her elder brother. Swinging his arms, he entered the court and picked up a basketball to warm up. 
He had not found any good opportunity to tell her about the whole thing relating to Little Carrot. Knowing her high expectations for her Jakey, he was at a loss as to how to begin. Jacob shot the ball into the basket and thought, I'll tell her after the match on Thursday. Kyle, who was impatient with his sister's talking, saw Jacob's perfect shot and his eyes lit up. He threw some words at her carelessly before walking over. Good, that was an excellent set shot. Come on over and warm up. Divide into teams and get ready for the match. Kyle had no interest in his younger sister's excitement over some boy. Instead, he thought well of Jacob. In his eyes, his sister was being silly to waste her time waiting for a so-called old friend while ignoring all the boys around her. He has made up his mind. If this Jakey did appear and was unworthy of his sister, he would not allow them to be together. Jacob entered the court and stood beside Sam. Kyle tossed him a bright green jersey, which Jacob pulled on over his shirt. Go, Jacob! Standing outside of the court, Kathy clenched her fists and called out to Jacob abruptly. Jacob gave her a radiant smile before waving a V sign at her. Kathy froze for a moment before returning with a dazzling smile. Kyle glanced at her and said, Kay, come and toss the ball. Kathy walked into the center of the court. She took the basketball and was about to toss it high when Kyle stopped her and said to Jacob, You have too many trinkets on your wrists. Take them all off. I'm fine with them, Jacob answered. Exasperated, Kyle explained to the basketball newbie, I don't care if you are fine with them or not. The point is, you could hurt others when you wear such things like watches or bracelets in a match. Oh. Jacob's indifferent response frustrated Kyle. Walking to the edge of the court, Jacob silently chanted the spell before taking off his bracelets and the little bell the sisters gave him. Jacob wondered what the sisters were doing right now. As if hearing his thoughts, Jade and Julia rushed into the gym. Master, what can we do for you? No, no, nothing. I happened to think of you when I took off the bell. Seeing them rush to him like the wind, Jacob explained to them in a whisper. Sam and the others were all startled when the sisters dashed in as if they were in a 100-meter race. Oh, are you playing basketball? We'll cheer for you, Jade said to Jacob. It seemed that they would stay. Jacob exhaled and returned to the court. There was no point in arguing with them. Looking back at the beautiful sisters, Kathy wanted to ask Jacob about them. But on second thought, she refrained from asking, reminding herself that Jacob was no one special to her. She tossed the basketball high in the air. Sam, Jacob, and Kyle jumped up like three rockets shooting into the air. Jacob's fingers touched the ball and easily flicked it toward his side. Kyle, who was more than two meters tall and a high jumper, looked at Jacob in astonishment as the latter had jumped a little higher than him. Go, go, master! As they were dressed in the bohemian-style dresses Helen had given them, Jade and Julia called out at the edge of the court. They were oblivious to the envy their call had roused in the guys in the gym. Even Jacob's teammate, Sam, felt such a surge of jealousy that he was tempted to kick him in the butt. At that moment, two people walked into the gym. One was an ethereal beauty dressed in a sky-blue school uniform, and the other was the college's most sought-after teacher, dressed in a long sweater, wearing a necklace. They were Sophie and Susan. Hand in hand, they walked toward the court in the center of the stadium. Ryan and the other guys who had come to watch the match were all dazed at the sight of such a large group of pretty girls. And all of them seemed to be there to watch Jacob play. What was going on with Jacob and all these girls? How did he get to be so lucky? What had suddenly happened to him?
Episode 133 Sophie's Insecurities After the initial shock of so many beautiful girls being there just for Jacob had passed, everyone focused back on the game at hand. On the court, Sam passed the ball to Jacob and said, Jacob, catch it. Jacob caught it easily before dribbling two steps forward. His movements were smooth and practiced. Spotting an opportunity, Jacob stopped while turning away from the defender. He raised the ball and made a shot. Standing on the edge of the court, Susan, Sophie, Jade, Julia, and Kathy all followed the ball expectantly with their eyes. The ball drew a brown arc and shot out. Bang! It crashed into the ceiling of the stadium. Susan had been hopeful after hearing Sophie's report about Jacob's great skills in basketball. Now, she relaxed and no longer cared about the situation in the court. Seeing Susan's disappointment, Sophie said in a whisper, I'm sure he was just flustered. It was her attempt to keep up Jacob's image with Susan, whom she knew he respected a lot. Jacob reddened since he had forgotten that his strength was about a dozen times greater without the burden of the heavy bracelets. That was why the ball flew out tens of meters away. Kyle looked at Jacob in exasperation and astonishment. On one hand, he was exasperated at the poor shot. On the other hand, he was astonished at the great strength. After all, not everyone can make a shot that long. My mistake... Jacob called out before running over and picking up the ball. Go, master! Jade and Julia called out to him. They didn't care about his skills, and even Jacob's mistake looked like an achievement to them. While Jacob ran back to the court, Julia asked Jade in a hushed tone, Will the master think we are annoying for following him everywhere? Jade smiled at her younger sister's question. I don't know. He will hopefully get used to us being around. I hope so, too, Julia said, returning her sister's smile. He got me out of prison and has been so nice to us. I have offered to serve him for a hundred years. But I don't want you to waste your time here. You can go back whenever you want. No, no, I'll stay here as long as you're staying. Julia immediately replied, not wanting to leave her sister. On the other hand, Susan and Sophie were observing Jade and Julia, who were standing opposite them. They are the sisters Elder Liam took in, aren't they? Susan turned her head slightly to Sophie and asked. Yeah, my dad told me that each of them has the strength of the top grade seventh level. Sophie nodded and said. Their powers were higher than top grade seventh level. They had lost some of their strength while imprisoned in the Dragon Palace. In a while, even I probably wouldn't win against them. Seriously? Are they that powerful? Sophie was surprised. Susan nodded with a look of disdain. She could see why Dracon was delighted to have the sisters stay in the mortal world. But she had a different perspective from that of Dracon's. As the Dragon King... He certainly hoped for a stronger home base and more powerful assistance. However, Susan, as an inspector, didn't like to see anyone in the clan too powerful for her to control. You came to visit me because of them, didn't you? Susan continued to ask Sophie, seeing right through Sophie's act. Sophie looked defensive. No, I came to visit you for fun. I know what you're thinking. Susan glanced at her before looking toward Kathy in another corner of the court. But I'm afraid the sisters are not real threats to you. You mean the real threat is that Kathy? Sophie was smart and immediately guessed whom Susan was talking about. She continued, She is immortal, not qualified to be my competition. Susan smiled, but she remained silent. She turned the topic back to the sisters. Jade and Julia are both powerful, and they are quite knowledgeable, which will be of great help to Jacob. Besides, they are not in our circle, 
and your identity does not affect them. In short, the odds of you defeating them are almost zero. I, I didn't say I wanted to defeat them. I only thought... Sophie fumbled. What? Susan asked. It is annoying, Sophie said. A smile appeared on Susan's cold face. Don't worry, Jacob won't go back on his promise. Whom do you think he is cultivating so hard for? I know all that, but... Sophie sighed hard, unable to put her feelings into words. Susan patted Sophie's head and tried to reassure her. He can take off the bracelets for a while each day, but including today, he only took them off twice till now. He works so hard for you. Before you turn 20, the more solid his realm is, the safer the process of returning you the Dragon Core will be. I think he knows that. Sophie looked down at the ground, feeling like a brat. She already knew everything that Susan had just mentioned. She knew that Jacob was doing everything just for her, but she was still a teenager. Seeing so many girls surround her fiancé and go to college with him each day while she was so far away at her school didn't sit well with her. She was, after all, a 15-year-old girl with all the insecurities any normal girl in her position would have. With a smile, Susan turned her gaze to Jacob in the match. To steady his cultivation realm, he chose the Sword Shadow Scroll, which possesses very little combat power. He is indeed single-mindedly cultivating for Sophie, she thought. Then she turned her gaze toward Jade and Julia, who were watching the match with adoration in their eyes and were lost in thought. Without the hindering burden of the heavy bracelets, Jacob gradually got used to the strength in his arms and was playing better and better on the court. Seeing Jacob's excellent performance, Kathy's eyes got brighter. Hearing Jade and Julia's cheering voices, the guys who had come to root for Jacob were so jealous that they all glared at him viciously. Sophie widened her big eyes at Jacob's snatches and attacks, thinking that him playing basketball was definitely a sight for sore eyes. The match ended after a couple of hours, with Jacob's team winning. Pulling off his jersey, Jacob walked towards Sophie and asked, What did you think? You play really well, Sophie said with a smile, giving Jacob the validation he was seeking from her. Jacob chuckled while wiping the sweat from his face. Your school is almost over. I will take you back. No, no, it's okay. You must need to get changed out of these clothes. Susan will take me back. Sophie answered back almost immediately while grabbing Susan's arm. Jacob was a little surprised and disappointed at her negative response, but he decided not to say anything about it. Jacob could only watch as Sophie dragged Susan towards the exit by her arm. She was anxious to get away from the college as she couldn't stand being in the room anymore. She refused Jacob's offer as she knew that he would pick up on her upset mood very easily and then pester her about it. At that moment, Jade and Julia jogged over to Jacob. Master, you were awesome! Jacob just smiled at them as a response and then looked at Kathy, who, very much like Sophie, rushed out of the court too. He sighed in confusion, thinking about what was up with the girls today. Then, he decided to deal with all that later and went ahead with the rest of his day. Thursday came. Ignoring the guys who were enviously gossiping, Jacob spent his free time over those two days studying the Sword Shadow Scroll and finally understood the route of the nature essence circulation in his body. It was a little after six and Jacob was cultivating secretly when he suddenly received a message from his dad. We are at the gate of your school now. Dad has really come to watch me play the match. Jacob hurried to the school gate with a smile. Sure enough, there was his dad's car parked right by the entrance. He pulled open the car door and found his dad, his mom, grandma, and a man he didn't recognize. Jacob, don't you remember Uncle Ray, Little Carrot's dad? 
He returned with me this time to visit home, Jacob's dad told him cheerfully. Episode 134 The Anxious Car Ride With half of his body in the car, Jacob stood up abruptly and banged his head on the doorframe. Jacob, are you all right? Grandma, who was sitting in the rear seat, asked Jacob anxiously. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm fine. Jacob rubbed the back of his head before getting into the car. Good evening, Uncle Ray, he managed to say. Good evening, son. I haven't seen you in so many years, and you've grown into such a handsome young man now. Ray grinned at Jacob. I still remember your cute face and the cartwheels you used to do when you were little. Jacob smiled bashfully, but he was actually very nervous. Shit, this is happening way too fast, he thought. Ray, Jacob's basketball match is about to begin so I will take the three of them to the stadium. Then, the two of us can take a walk around the campus and relive our time in college. Walter, Jacob's father, smiled at his friend. Good plan. I took Kay there when she entered college, but I never imagined that I could one day walk around the university with you again, Ray said excitedly. Speaking of which, are you sure you don't want to call her and inform her of your arrival? Walter asked. My nephew is the captain of the basketball team, so Kay will definitely be at today's match. I will surprise her there, Ray said with a chuckle. Suddenly, he turned to Jacob. Your father told you her name. Why didn't you look for her? She has been pestering me to tell her more about you for the past two days. I just asked her to wait for you to find her, but you never did. Uh, because... Jacob stammered finding it hard to give a proper explanation. Of course, he couldn't tell them that the reason he didn't talk to her was that she had way too many expectations of Jakey. He didn't want to see the disappointed look on her face when she found out that the guy she had been waiting for so long was not a genius, but plain and average Jacob. Well, I guess you feel awkward after not seeing her for more than ten years, don't you? Ray guessed, seeing Jacob's expression. Yeah, Jacob would feel weird if he visited her suddenly. They were so close to each other as kids. I think it's good that they get to meet again with the whole family present. It will cut out the awkwardness, Mila said. Jacob mentally thanked his mom for jumping in to save him. At Mila's words, he suddenly remembered how Kathy's family used to visit his family. While the adults talked and drank late into the night... He and Little Carrot would play around the house and finally go to bed, tired, in his room. It had happened when they were in elementary school, but he still blushed at the memory. You're right. I'm just happy that all of us were able to reconnect, Ray said. Well, I can't wait to see what Little Carrot has grown into. Anyway, she was such a pretty little girl back then, and I'm sure she's beautiful now, Walter said while driving the car. Ray said fondly, She is the best daughter one could ask for. He glanced at Jacob and said, Jacob seems great too. Okay, now stop trading compliments. Grandma interrupted them and laughed. Listening to you, I'm quite curious to see what the girl who used to run around with Jacob has grown into. Yeah. You used to give her the best treats when she came to our home. Remember how jealous Jacob used to get whenever he thought that his grandma loved her more than him? Mila said with a laugh. While they talked about the old times, Jacob couldn't put in one word. Not that he wanted to. There were too many things on his mind at the moment. Kathy, Sophie, her family, and in some corner, the basketball match. Seeing Jacob remaining silent, Grandma asked, 
Jacob, you are quite nervous about seeing little Carrot again, aren't you? Yeah, Jacob exhaled helplessly and thought, they would be surprised that little Carrot is in fact my classmate. Seeing their excitement, Jacob decided not to tell them about it right now and to give them a shock, since they seemed so keen on surprises. The car arrived at the stadium before Jacob had even managed to tame his nervously beating heart. Walter took a walk around the campus with his old classmate Ray after asking the others to go to the stadium and get seats for them. Mila didn't stop them, knowing that the two old classmates had a lot to catch up on. She helped Grandma into the stadium. Mom, how come Uncle Ray came with you guys? Jacob asked. Mila put on a cap under the sun and replied, Your father met Ray when he was in a meeting. They were so excited after not seeing each other for more than a decade that your father insisted Ray come back with him. Ray wanted to visit his daughter too, and they ended up coming back on the same flight. How come he came to watch the match in the same car? Jacob continued to ask. They flew back to the city this afternoon. Since the airport is not far from our house, he paid a visit to us. After knowing that you have a match tonight, he decided to come with us to watch, Mila explained. Jacob turned and saw Walter and Ray talking animatedly while walking into the depths of the campus. It occurred to him that their friendship remained intact, even though they had not seen each other for more than ten years. Didn't Little Carrot's mom come back? Jacob asked. They have a factory in London, and it's hectic at this time of year. Ray had to do a lot of rescheduling before he could come back. Her mom must have stayed there to tend to the business, said Mila. Oh, okay. Jacob nodded and didn't ask any more questions. After so many years, we still feel very close to their family. After graduation, your dad and I were really poor. Your father wanted to enter a research institute, while Ray wanted to build his own business. They had been good friends when they were at university, and they continued to help each other even after they got married. They got through the most difficult times together. Later on, Ray went abroad, and we lost contact with each other due to the limited communication methods at that time. After we sold the downtown apartment and moved to the seaside, it became more difficult for them to find us. Mila said emotionally. Jacob had a vague memory of those happy days in poverty. He faintly remembered that Little Carrot's family had been a bit better off than his since his parents insisted on building their careers in science research, which at that time had been short of funds. Her family had helped his family a lot financially. I guess Uncle Ray doesn't read science periodicals. Otherwise, he would have seen yours and dad's names and photos, right? Jacob asked abruptly. I guess. Ray has been busy managing his business. I suppose he doesn't have much time to follow the science news. Mila nodded. Then she waved her hand and said, The past is the past. It's a blessing that we can meet each other again. I just want to remind you that Little Carrot's family helped us in the most difficult times and you should be nice to her. Of course. Jacob sighed again and entered the stadium. He couldn't postpone the inevitable any longer. He was really anxious to see Kathy's reaction when the truth was revealed to her. She had rejected the idea of any attraction she had towards him so she could be with her childhood sweetheart, and now she was about to find out that he was the same guy she had been dreaming about. It was going to be really awkward for both of them from this point on. It was still one hour before the match, and there were not many people in the stands. Mila helped Grandma to a front row seat so that she could have a better view of the match. Grandma! Suddenly, a clear voice pierced through the air in the stadium. Grandma turned, immediately recognizing the voice, and saw Sophie. She was in the company of Dracon and Helen, skipping toward her. Soph, I missed you so much. Grandma clapped her hands before taking Sophie into her arms.
Episode 135 Jacob or Jakey? Mila smiled politely and said to Dracon and Helen, I didn't know that you guys were coming today as well. Dracon and Helen smiled at Mila and replied, A few days ago, Soph told us that Jacob would be playing in the match, and we agreed to come and watch him. On the court, Jacob had changed into his jersey and was doing warm-up exercises with his teammates. I didn't even know that our Jacob could play basketball, Grandma said, looking at Jacob on the court. He plays well. Did you see his new shoes? I gifted him those, Sophie said with a proud grin. Really? That is so considerate of you, darling. Grandma looked down on Sophie's pretty face and caressed her hair lovingly. Jacob turned his head and saw Grandma and Sophie's family sitting together. He waved at them. Go, Jacob! Helen called out to him. Jacob smiled before turning back to the warm-up. Sam, who stood beside him, saw Dracon, Helen, and Sophie and recognized that they were the family whose daughter was being tutored by Jacob. He wondered why they had come to watch this match. However, he failed to notice that the woman standing beside Sophie was Mila, an accredited scientist from their university. The door to the other locker room in the stadium opened and the basketball team of the other university in black jerseys filed out. They were all well-built and intimidating at first glance. While on their side, there were hardly any buffed-up players other than Kyle, as Jacob had fought with most of them and gotten them suspended from the team. The captain of the other university's team was a guy who was even taller and looked stronger than Kyle. With heavy steps, he walked over to them. He glanced at the lineup in front of him, and his gaze rested on Jacob and Sam. He said sarcastically, Well, Kyle, you know you couldn't beat us normally, so you resort to the dwarf strategy now? With a cold face, Kyle pointed to the place behind him. Your warm-up zone's over there. I don't want to bicker with you. We will find out who's stronger on the court. Go. The guy waved his hand arrogantly and led his players past the players toward the other half of the court. While they passed they intentionally bumped into the players in the green jerseys with their brawny shoulders. Jacob was also bumped in the shoulder by the captain of the other team, but he didn't fight back. Instead, he backed off two steps intentionally. Power forward. Kyle patted Jacob on his shoulder as his eyes locked onto the captain of the other university's basketball team, whose number on the jersey was one. Bump into him hard in the match. Kyle whispered. Jacob just stared at Kyle for a moment and smiled at how his brain worked. It was half an hour before the match. On the campus road, a white figure was riding a bike speedily. Darkness had fallen and the street lights spread weak illumination on the street. It was Kathy. It took her some time to help the administrative office to organize some stuff. Afraid of missing the match, she hurried towards the stadium. Abruptly, she stopped paddling and looked ahead at the figures of two middle-aged men not far from her. Dad? Staring at their backs, she braked slightly and called out tentatively when she got closer. The two middle-aged men turned their heads simultaneously. Dad! With her dad's identity confirmed, Kathy was pleasantly surprised. However, when her gaze turned to the man standing beside Ray... Her expression froze, and she almost fell from the seat of her bike. Dr. Brown? Her eyes widened as she called out in disbelief. Is this your daughter, Kathy? She's very pretty, Walter said with a chuckle. Suddenly, he remembered something, and his face lit up with recognition, too. Isn't she the girl who dragged Jacob to line up for signatures? He thought. During that signing session, Mila had winked at him. When she got home, she kept talking about how she was sure that the girl was Jacob's girlfriend, and that girl looked so pretty and elegant. That was why he had a deep impression of Kathy. 
Walter and Kathy looked at each other with wide eyes. Seeing that they were in a daze, Ray was confused as well. He told Kathy, He is your Jakey's dad, Walter. You used to call him Uncle Walter. Jakey's dad? Kathy's hands, holding the handles of the bike, shook as she thought. Um, hello. She gathered her thoughts and greeted Walter. Meanwhile, Walter was still confused. He wondered what the relationship was between Kathy and Jacob. Had they known each other, or... he thought. Kathy's eyes looked distracted, but her mind was turning furiously fast. Walter is Dad's old classmate and Jakey's dad? Jakey is the son of Walter and Mila, two influential scientists. Dad called to ask me if Jakey had visited me or not, which means he knows me. Maybe he didn't show up because he is so excellent that he thinks I'm not worthy of a reunion. Any hope in her heart of meeting her old friend again completely deflated. She assumed the worst and thought that someone from such a rich academic background would never waste his time on her. Hey, what's wrong with you? Ray patted his daughter's cheek. Oh, nothing. Why are you here? Kathy shook her head and regained her composure before asking. I'm here to visit you and the school with my old classmate, Ray said. He asked again, did Jakey come to see you? No, Kathy shook her head. She looked at Walter with complicated feelings swarming in her heart. It is almost time. Let's go to the stadium. Walter checked his watch and said. He was a bit confused, but he decided to wait until he called Jacob and questioned him before saying anything. With a blank mind, Kathy got off her bike and walked with them toward the stadium. As smart as she was, she was so confused right now that she didn't think to ask them why they wanted to go to the stadium. Walter had been her biggest inspiration, and Jakey was his son. But, for some reason, she didn't feel happy about it. Although she always thought that Jakey would be excellent, it was still a shocker for her to suddenly find that he was so far above her. The three of them entered the stadium and looked for Mila and Grandma in the stands. The match was about to begin shortly, and the stands were now full of students. It was difficult for the three to find them. Walter had no choice but to take out his cell phone and call Mila. After receiving the call, Mila immediately took Grandma to look for Walter. Grandma had wanted to keep Sophie company, but she followed Mila since she wanted to meet Little Carrot, whom she had not seen for so long. When they met, Kathy was less surprised than Mila, who froze on the spot. Ray didn't know why the couple and Kathy reacted so weirdly when seeing each other. However, Kathy recovered quickly and greeted them. Dr. Brown! Grandma! Grandma was very pleased with Kathy, who had grown up into such a pretty young woman. She held Kathy's hand and said, I can't believe you've grown so much. Little carrot, I never forgot about you. In her faint childhood memories, except for the ever stronger image of her beloved Jakey, the other distinct impression was of Jakey's grandmother, who had been very good to her. Whenever she went to their home, Grandma would take out her precious snacks and let her have as many as she wanted. Somehow, Kathy was struck with a sudden sense of sadness. While she looked at Grandma, who almost hadn't changed, tears rushed into her eyes. Grandma? Oh, darling, why are you crying? Grandma's heart ached when she saw that Kathy was about to cry. She took her into her arms and patted her back to comfort her. At that moment, Kathy's tears dropped like pearls falling from a broken string. Grandma knew that Little Carrot cried because she was too excited to meet them after so many years of separation. She quickly found Kathy a seat, thinking that she was still prone to crying just like when she was little. In the past, she used to cry when Jakey bullied her, but now it seemed like no one would do that. Well, well, don't cry. 
you should be happy about today. Grandma consoled Kathy. When Kathy was little, Grandma treated Kathy as her own granddaughter. Although she was grown up now, Grandma's affection for her remained the same. Kathy sniffed, trying to calm down. She knew she had been in a mess recently with her feelings for Jakey. She dried her tears and forced out a smile, which looked like a blooming flower and brightened Grandma's mood. Grandma, how come you are here to watch the basketball match? Kathy calmed herself down before asking. Yeah, I'm here to watch Jacob play the match. Oh, remember how you used to call him Jakey when you were little? And we used to call him Jay as a nickname. Grandma nodded before asking abruptly, Well, hasn't Jacob met you yet? Jacob? Kathy's slightly numb brain suddenly made a connection between those two names. Baffled, she glanced at Grandma, who was holding her, before turning her gaze toward the court. Episode 136 The Game Begins The game was about to start after the warm-up. Loud cheering could be heard all around the stadium. The energy of the crowd was at an all-time high. After all, these two teams were going to be each other's biggest rivals when the season actually started. Jacob high-fived all of his team members in his dark green jersey that had an 8 on it. He was a little nervous, since this was his first formal basketball game ever. On the stands, Kathy turned back and asked Grandma, Jacob is your grandson? Grandma looked at her kindly and answered, Yeah, see that number eight? I'll ask him to come up here and meet you after the game. You guys can talk for a bit. The group found a spot to sit before the game, and Walter, Mila, and Ray all sat beside Grandma. Kathy felt a little dizzy when she heard Grandma's calm answer. It turned out that the Jakey she had always cared about was this classmate of hers who she could see every single day. The seemingly ordinary Jacob, who was running around on the court amongst the tall men, was actually Walter and Mila's son. He had been hiding it so well. Kathy suddenly flushed as she remembered the time when she dragged him to the guest lectures and told him about her admiration for the two outstanding scientists. Her cheeks felt warm as she recalled how she had rambled on and on to him in excitement and didn't realize that she was talking about his own parents. She kicked herself mentally for not making the connection sooner with the surname and the fact that Jacob basically looked like a younger version of Walter. Her dad owned a company in London, and his annual earnings were pretty good. They were rich. Although the company had been expanding over the years, she had never felt the need to show off her parents' money in front of other people. She always kept a low profile in college and focused solely on her studies. This is the reason most people assumed that she belonged to a lower-income family, just like she had assumed the same about Jacob. Jacob's parents were world-famous scientists who had won tons of global rewards and prizes. The bonuses they received would be over a few hundred thousand each year, yet Jacob had never advocated it. He would pay the bill when he needed to and go out when he wanted to. However, he never spent his money lavishly and never spent money on silly, expensive things. His appearance was even more low-key than Kathy. She assumed Jakey had attended prestigious schools and stood out as a truly exceptional individual among his peers. She had no idea he would be just another ordinary student. Jakey turned out to be Jacob. No wonder the more time she spent with him the closer she felt towards him. 
Kathy's emotions changed from astonished to emotional and then to confused. She didn't know what or how to feel anymore. She felt extremely embarrassed that she had confessed all her feelings about her childhood love to Jacob, only to find out that she was talking to him about him alone. She didn't know if Jacob had similar feelings for her or not. She also didn't know if she could risk ruining the beautiful friendship she had formed with Jacob by acting on her feelings from ages ago. She had a fair idea that it would be awkward to hang around Jacob now, for a few days at least. Lost in her thoughts, she didn't notice when the game started as the basketball was thrown high into the air. Jacob was in his new basketball shoes, and he jumped up immediately as if there were springs installed under his feet. He easily flipped the ball away from Chad, the captain of the other university's team, who was in his number one black jersey. Chad was taken aback by the shorty in the number eight jersey. He couldn't believe what had just occurred, because even Kyle couldn't jump as high as Jacob had just done. Jacob landed steadily and dashed into the other half of the court without stopping. Kyle noticed how surprised Chad was. He caught the basketball with one hand as soon as Jacob passed it to him and dribbled quickly ahead. He dodged the defense of two players from the other university and came to the basket. Then, he jumped up in a graceful manner which made the crowd go crazy. An excellent dunk won their university the first two points in the game pretty early on. On the stands on the east side, Sophie proudly turned to Helen and said, See, it's all because of those new basketball shoes. Helen smiled speechlessly. It was her who bought Jacob those shoes, but it was all Sophie's idea now. But, to be fair... Sophie had been the one who came up with the idea of getting Jacob a present and had also picked out these particular shoes when they went to the mall. She had said that Jacob would surely love them and had been absolutely spot on. Um, how come Grandma isn't back yet? Sophie looked around and asked. Looks like she saw an acquaintance from before and she went to say hi with Jacob's dad, Helen answered. Oh. Sophie looked back at the game without any more questions. Chad glanced at the scoreboard and saw a two light up. He was still surprised. Everyone on Jacob's university side burst into cheers at the impressive dunk. Since they were hosting the game, this first score was a huge hit for the other university. Kyle walked over to Jacob and patted his shoulder. Well done. He asked Jacob to do the jump ball, played supportive himself, and, as he had hoped, Jacob didn't disappoint him. Therefore, Kyle was able to catch the other team off guard and earn those two points. After the first two points were taken, Chad realized that he had underestimated this shorty army. He shouted at his teammates madly, Keep an eye on Kyle! The other team made a few smooth passes, and it could be seen that they were very skilled as well. The player with the number five black jersey made a shot after he had gotten a good chance. Kyle instantly raised his hand to block the ball. Its trajectory was shifted, and it smashed onto the backboard before bouncing off. Miss. Rebound. About five or six players jumped up at the same time. Jacob, who was in the middle jumped the highest as planned. He grasped the ball with one hand and hugged it in his arms. He kept Kathy's words with him at all times. The priority of a power forward is to get the rebound. At that point, Kyle was being guarded tightly by two players from the other team, and Jacob found an excellent opportunity to pass the ball on to his buddy, Sam, through a gap. Sam was left with no defense. He got the ball with excitement and dashed to the opposite basket like a bomb. Defense! Defense! Chad, who didn't get the rebound, shouted. A shorty like him shouldn't be able to do much. He shouted out what he was secretly thinking in panic. 
Sam was the shortest player on the court, even shorter than Jacob. However, because of his height, his low center of gravity allowed him to run fast with a smooth dribble. A smooth turn, a cross-leg dribble, and a fake move, he was able to leave everyone behind. He swam through all the giants in the black jerseys like a fish and made a standard, yet accurate, layup. Three guys jumped up to block his shot at the same time. Sam suddenly threw a behind-the-back pass. Jacob was standing still as he saw the basketball land perfectly in his hands. What an excellent pass! He's a power forward. Ignore him and defend Kyle, Chad shouted with his arms open. Do it, Kyle commanded while he was guarded tightly by three players. Jacob held the ball with both hands and the time around him suddenly froze. All the eyes in the stadium were on Jacob's hands, including the players on the court. Everything was so clear and in slow motion in Jacob's eyes and even the slightest movement was clear to him. There was dripping sweat, intense stares, the touching of arms under the basket. Jacob made a shot. The ball drew a curved trajectory over those three players from the other university who had just jumped into the air. Jacob could see the ball spinning in the air. He scored! Episode 137 Foul Play Everyone in the stadium cheered loudly as soon as the ball hit the ground after winning Jacob's team two more points. Kathy, the crazy basketball fan, jumped out of her seat immediately. Although Grandma didn't know much about basketball, she could still tell that Jacob just scored. Therefore, she also stood up with the nearby students in excitement. Walter and Mila looked at each other in surprise. They had no idea that Jacob got so good at basketball after he had gone to university. Ryan and the other guys on the other side of the stadium were all shocked. They wondered if the person in the number eight jersey was actually their friend, Jacob. Since it was their home game, the cheer for the straight four points was deafeningly loud. Afterward, Kathy held Grandma's arm as they sat down. Grandma asked Kathy proudly, still excited, Our Jacob is quite amazing, isn't he? Yeah, Kathy nodded. Little Carrot. Oh, I should probably call you Kathy now. Grandma held Kathy's hands as she looked at her pretty face. We couldn't do much since we have lost contact with your family. Since we have finally met again, our two families need to stay in touch. I know that your parents are still in London. It must not be easy for you to be on your own. Come to spend some time with me whenever you are free. Okay. Kathy nodded again. Grandma looked at the shy girl who was so pretty that it looked like she was carved out of jade. She remembered how Little Carrot and Jacob played together as kids and wondered how nice it would have been if they had grown up together. The game continued on the court below them. The captain of the other university, Chad, looked extremely mad. He had underestimated Jacob and Sam, and that cost him four points in a row. Jacob and Sam were the shortest players on the court. To his utmost surprise... They were the ones who messed up the entire plan he made before the game. Currently, the other team is four points behind, still at zero. Their team was going hard and tried to take two points back to boost their morale. But Sam suddenly dashed across and cut off their pass successfully. Good job! Kyle couldn't help but shout out. Sam dribbled quickly and passed it on to his team member Bear and Bear found a great position and passed it on to Kyle. When two players went over to defend him, Kyle passed it back to Sam. 
Chad noticed that two of his team members were going for Sam and shouted, Watch Kyle! Two players blocked Kyle, so he didn't have a chance at all. However, Kyle secretly praised Chad as the captain could accurately determine Jacob's power forward position and Sam's point guard position through the way they played so far. Neither of these positions was the leading score getters in the game. As long as the other university kept an eye on Kyle, who was the guy who was the small forward, they shouldn't need to worry about their university winning the game. After all, the two teams played against each other last year and they all knew about the old player's abilities. When Sam saw that Jacob had been guarded, he made a quick decision and hopped up with both hands on the ball. Two players from the other university reached out to block him. Watch out for his pass, Chad shouted. However, Sam didn't pass the ball this time. His body leaned backward as he made the shot. The ball passed through those two players and shot towards the basket. The ball bounced on the basket before it went in. There was another wave of cheers in the stands. Six to zero. What the hell? Chad shouted in frustration. Sam suddenly became the hero, and he turned to the audience with his arms up. Damn, now Sam will be famous and there will be lots of girls interested in him. Ryan cried out in the stands. The players who had been suspended from the team because of Sam were also present in the stands. They were surprised. They had no idea that the guy whom they looked down upon was actually so good at basketball. Their university was in the lead even though the game had just started. The entire stadium was cheering crazily. As the game went on, Jacob, the power forward, kept Kathy's words in mind. Rebound and defense. Jacob kept up the good teamwork with Kyle, the center. They worked together on getting the rebounds, blocking in the restricted area, defending for each other, and controlling the tempo. On top of that, the point guard, Sam, succeeded in stealing the ball several times with his agile movements. Their university kept scoring, and they maintained a lead of over 10 points. Chad's shouting turned into roaring, but Jacob, Kyle, and Sam were like a fantastic iron triangle. Half of the game was almost finished, and the tallest and strongest player on the side of the other university, Chad, finally gave away his center position to focus on defending Jacob. There would be no chance for the other university to win if they couldn't break the iron triangle. Jacob, catch the ball! Sam made a smooth behind-the-back pass, and the ball accurately fell into Jacob's palm. Cut to the inside lane. Pass it if there's an opportunity to score. Jacob remembered Kathy's instruction vividly and tried to break through the defense line with the basketball. As he focused on getting forward, a body suddenly entered his peripheral view. He turned around and saw Chad dashing over madly with a twisted face. Their shoulders collided. Chad was even stronger than Kyle. Kathy opened her eyes wide and held her fists tight on the stands. Her nails dug into her palms out of nervousness. Kyle had already cut into the inner lane and was waiting for Jacob's ball. He was nervous in this situation as well. But much to almost everyone's shock, Chad was the one who was knocked away. He backed up five or six steps before falling onto the floor and sliding to the outside of the court unbalanced. He turned to the referee, but the referee signaled everyone to carry on with the game. Jacob passed the ball successfully to Kyle, and there went another exciting dunk. The game carried on, and Chad had his eyes on Jacob again. He was flipped aside in another crash. It was a foul! He stood back up and shouted to the referee. However, the referee shrugged in disagreement. That seemed to be a reasonable collision. If anything, Chad's malicious intent was more noticeable. Chad returned to the court madly. 
He couldn't figure out how Jacob was that heavy. He felt like Jacob's feet were rooted to the floor. It was absolutely impossible to knock him over. On the other hand, Jacob could easily knock him away with just a little movement. After another similar collision between the two, the referee finally couldn't stand Chad anymore and said to him, I will give you a foul if you do this kind of fake move again. What fake? I was knocked over by him, Chad yelled as he was pulled back by his team. It was really irrational for the captain to argue with the referee. As the game went on, Chad kept on defending Jacob. However, whenever he tried to crash into him on purpose, he would immediately get bounced back. His movement of being knocked over appeared to be extremely exaggerated. The referee got annoyed by him gradually, and the audience all hissed at him as well. Seth, you come and defend him. Finding this strange, Chad shouted at one of his teammates. When Jacob got the ball again, another guy was present there to defend him. The two teams were hostile to each other at this point, especially when the other university was many points behind. All their players were a bit furious, and Seth's defense was a bit overdone as well. He smashed his arm heavily into Jacob's shoulder while Jacob was dribbling with his knees bent, and Jacob immediately got knocked a few steps back. The referee whistled and signaled the collision foul. The audience burst into an uproar. Chad was just about to argue with the referee. Then, he suddenly realized, Wait a minute. I got knocked back when I collided with this guy, yet Seth, who's shorter than me, could knock him over. If I say anything now, it would just go on to prove that I was getting knocked down on purpose. He swallowed his words while the audience realized the irony and hissed at Chad again. Physically, Chad's arms were even thicker than Jacob's legs. No one would believe that Jacob could knock him over instead of the other way around. Everyone thought Chad was overly dramatic with his acting, including the referee. Jacob scored a penalty shot, and the entire stadium cheered again. Kyle secretly raised his thumb at Jacob. That player in the number one jersey from the other team is too sneaky. He couldn't win in skills, so he's going for collisions and putting dirt on Jacob with a fake move. Who would even believe that's real? Jacob's roommate said angrily on the south stands. Yes, too fake, just too fake, the guys beside him agreed. The coach of the other university, who was sitting in the corner, looked really mad. He thought the vigorous training had improved the team members in both strength and skills. The goal of this friendly match was to take the edge off of the other team's spirit and get off to a flying start for the season this year. However, instead of a flying start, they were defeated right in the start. Despite the poor points they have gotten, their players were getting injured and they were the ones asking for it. Vice President Liam, who was on the opposite side of the stadium, was smiling. Kyle, as the coach as well as the captain of the team, is indeed one of the best we've ever had. On the other hand, Chad is a shameful bastard who went for fake injuries and fake fouls instead of actually trying to play well, he thought. Episode 138, Going for the Kill. It was halftime. Jacob was covered in sweat, and he followed Kyle to the side of the court to rest. Sam also walked proudly to the resting area to wipe his sweat off under the public's gaze. Music started playing. When all the basketball players and the audience were just about to take a break and grab a sip of water... Jade and Julia jumped onto the court in their tight, 
thin, mid-sleeved shirts and red short skirts. They were holding pom-poms. Everyone looked straight at them, especially the guys in the audience. Six pretty girls followed Jade and Julia onto the court before they started their cheerleading routine. Jacob couldn't help but spit a mouthful of water out. No wonder he hadn't seen the sisters lately. It turned out that they have been practicing the dance. Jacob had no idea that they became members of the cheerleading squad. He looked behind the sisters at the other six girls, but didn't find Lisa. Jacob then realized that the former cheerleader captain had been completely ruled out of the team. This was Jade and Julia's first show. They were doing a great job with their practiced moves and big smiles. All the eyes were glued to them. Julia was dancing and bouncing rapidly as she waved the pom-poms up and down. She said to Jade, Sister, this is so embarrassing. What's embarrassing about it? This is how mortals dance. Jade answered as she danced. Um, all right. Julia continued her dance, though not very convinced. After their routine was over, the girls walked towards the side of the court and put down their pom-poms, and then walked over to talk to the players. Are you thirsty? Are you tired? Jade and Julia walked to Jacob's side. One held up a bottle for him while the other held a towel. This made Jacob even more nervous because all the guys in the audience were looking at them at this moment. Sophie from the stands also saw this scene. Her eyes were wide open and her mouth was tightly closed. If anybody looked into her eyes at that moment, they would see pure fury. A little away from her, Kathy lowered her eyes at the scene. She was still too shaken up by all the news she had received in the first half of the game. Jacob's grandma couldn't help but turn around to ask Walter and Mila, Jacob is this popular at school? Mom, it's nothing. There are always girls around when kids play basketball, Mila explained as she saw Kathy's fallen face. The game started again after halftime. Jade and Julia went up to the stands to sit beside Liam. Everyone still had their eyes on them. Those girls are Vice Principal Liam's granddaughters? Who would dare to have a thought for the Vice Principal's granddaughters? The guys who were determined to pursue the girls immediately gave up this idea. Mila, who was also paying attention to the sisters, saw them sitting beside Liam and knew that there must have been a special relationship between them. After some consideration, she realized that they were Liam's granddaughters. She originally planned to keep a low profile and go back after the game. However, she decided to talk with Liam afterward. Mila could tell that Kathy liked Jacob and she didn't want her to be wronged. On the other side of the stands, Helen decided to have a talk with Liam after the game as well, as she looked at the pretty sisters chatting happily. Although the sisters were paying a debt of gratitude, it made Soph look really bad as they acted so close to Jacob in public. It was too much, even though they were trying to get on the clan's good side. Just when they were both thinking about this, Chad got knocked over again by Jacob while he was trying to defend him. This time, even the players on his team showed disdain at Chad's act by muttering curses among themselves. When the other players ran into Jacob while he was defending or dribbling, they would always knock him back a few steps. This had made Chad very embarrassed, yet he couldn't explain it. Therefore, he had to give up on defending Jacob. The captain, Chad's panicked movements, had brought down their university's spirits to another degree. Jacob got all the rebounds in the game, while Sam kept on getting the ball as the point guard. Sam had slowly become the most active player on the court. He would always appear at the most needed places and score through the gaps. This had made him the second scorer after the small forward. The difference in score got bigger and bigger. This game was getting easier for Jacob's university by each point. Sam had completely stolen the show with Jacob's assistance and his excellent skills. Some of the girls were starting to look at him with admiration. 
Since the winning token was already safely in their pockets, Sam stopped playing conservatively. At this moment, the competition was more like an exhibition match due to the significant difference in scores. Sam threw the ball to Jacob, who was standing outside the restricted area. Jacob was used to dashing inside for the rebounds, so he was a little confused when taking charge of the ball. From over the shoulders of two defending players who were running madly towards him, Jacob saw that Sophie was looking at him, full of expectation. Jacob threw the ball out without further hesitation. He hopped up as the ball drew a long curvature in the air. A three-pointer! The stadium was filled with cheering once again. Not only Sophie on the east stands, but also Kathy on the west stands were astonished. She had just taught Jacob about the basics. All the amazing talent he was portraying today was all him. To pay Jacob back, Sam, who was already the center of the game, kept feeding Jacob the basketball in different ways. And Jacob kept scoring after seeing Grandma's smiley face, Kathy's nervously clenched fists, Sophie's brightened eyes, and Liam's kind smile. Compared to how arrogant Chad was at the beginning of the game, he now looked as if he was about to have a breakdown. Just that easily, the game finally came to an end. Chad's entire team was crushed in spirit as they returned to the courtside with their heads down. Their coach glimpsed at the score, broken-hearted. He looked back at his team and saw how they had gone from extremely confident before the game to completely devastated now. He knew that this dent in their confidence would be hard to get over during the actual season. As the captain of his team, Kyle didn't forget the vile comments Chad was making about him and his teammates all throughout the game in a vain attempt to rile them up. He smiled victoriously as his eyes met Chad's and he flipped him off for a final measure. Kyle noticed that the other team was packing up their belongings depressingly and had quietly gone back to the locker room. He knew that his team had set their dominance for the rest of the season. This game was like a dagger, stabbing into the other team's hearts. The two universities had been competitors on the basketball court for years. Now that the other university was here to pick a fight, Jacob's university was able to win with a large lead, beyond everyone's expectations. The basketball team had just lost a few of their main forces, yet they were able to guard their host game. The entire stadium became the heaven of celebrations. Kyle sighed deeply as all his pressure immediately disappeared. It was his decision to kick the troublemaking guys out of this game, so there was a lot of pressure on him to win this game. And now, Sam's rapid improvement made him stand out and Jacob's hidden potential made him unbeatable at rebounds and three-pointers. All these proved that he had made the right call. It also proved that he was the best captain his team could have. Great work, guys. Dinner's on me. Kyle waved at the cold bench as well. You guys are coming too. Come apologize to Sam, he said to the guys who had fought with Sam and Jacob. Hearing this, the four of them on the cold bench knew that they still had a chance to play for the team. They all ran over hurriedly. Episode 139, Secret Conversations You are the big hero today, Jacob. You should join our team officially. Kyle patted his shoulder again. Nah, I was only here to help. I have no interest in playing basketball long term, Jacob said up front as he wiped his forehead with a white towel. Although Kyle wanted to persuade him, he gave the thought up after some consideration. All right, we all have our passions, but with your talent, I'm sure you can succeed in anything. He had been the captain of the basketball team for a few years. Therefore, he had excellent leadership skills and sharp eyes for seeing people's potential. From what he could tell, Jacob's outstanding abilities would not reach their full potential inside a small basketball court. Then Kyle said, almost as an afterthought, I think you're a good guy. If only Kay saw it. Sam and the rest of the team were both surprised at how straightforward he was. 
They knew Kyle was very protective of his charming little sister and never let any of them get in touch with her. Jacob must have an excellent character to make Kyle so fond of him, they thought. Jacob laughed quietly, and Kyle waved at the guys again. Come on, I'm paying. Jacob walked to the side and picked up his phone. There were several missed calls. They were from his dad, his mom, Helen, Kathy, Sophie, and Liam. At this moment, Liam walked in between aisles with Jade and Julia. He said, The team did very well this time. The players were all surprised at the vice principal's praise. In the past, he didn't even show up when they won the championship in the basketball league. At the same time, Sophie's family, Jacob's family, Kathy, and Ray came over from both sides. They gathered in the resting area. Sophie frowned a little when she saw Grandma holding Kathy's arm. Kathy sensed the hostility in Sophie's eyes but she still thought that Sophie was Susan's cousin and she was defensive on behalf of Susan. Therefore, she didn't care much about her and turned to Kyle. Great job this time. It's all thanks to Jacob. Kyle took advantage of this opportunity to praise Jacob. He noticed Ray and greeted, Hey, Uncle. Kyle, you're getting better and better. Ray smiled appreciatively. Seeing all those people coming to them, Sam suddenly recognized Sophie, who caused the big scene at school last time, and Helen, who came to pick Jacob up in her expensive car. However, he didn't recognize Mila under her cap and Walter in his sweatshirt. He never paid attention to the news and never thought these world-class scientists would appear here. Kyle didn't want to stay there after seeing that all these people were coming for Jacob. He said to Ray, Uncle, I'm going out with the team for dinner. Are you coming to stay at my place tonight? I'm staying with an old friend of mine tonight and will be going over to your place tomorrow. I'm not staying here very long. I probably will head back to London the day after tomorrow, Ray said. Okay. Kyle nodded and turned to Liam. Vice Principal, I'm taking them out for dinner then. Go ahead, Liam smiled and waved. Kyle knew that Jacob wouldn't be able to leave, so he didn't insist. He took Sam and the other guys to the locker room. After that, Jacob was only left with the three groups of people. They surrounded Jacob and formed a triangle. They looked at each other as they wondered what the relationship was between each other. All of them were too cautious to say something first. Even Jacob's grandma sensed the strange atmosphere and kept her mouth shut. Louise, who is this? Helen looked at Kathy and asked after a few seconds. Oh, this is Kathy. She has been a friend of Jacob's since they were little, grandma said. Then she continued, and this is Ray. Walter's university classmate and Kathy's father. Hello. Ray smiled lightly at Helen. Hello. Helen smiled back politely. Then everyone started to introduce themselves in harmony. Of course, everyone knew that Liam was the vice principal. Grandma wanted Soph to be her granddaughter-in-law. However, she wouldn't introduce her that way in front of everyone. Therefore, Sophie's family was introduced to Ray as Jacob's family's good friends in the city. Kathy felt strange when the vice principal stayed with them with his two granddaughters. Does he have a relationship with Jacob's family as well? She thought. Ray just came back from the UK today and Walter is going to have dinner with his old friend. Now that you all know each other, would you like to go together? Grandma asked Helen's family. That's all right. It's been a long time since you saw each other. You should spend more time together, Helen said. She glimpsed at Kathy as she spoke and thought to herself, This girl is really pretty. 
Her temperament isn't weak at all, even though she has never cultivated. She was a world-class architect and was extremely good at appreciating beauty. Even if Lisa were to stand in front of her with a lot of makeup, she would think that Lisa was just an ordinary-looking girl. Then she turned to Liam. Vice Principal Liam, I would like to talk to you in private. Is that okay? Liam said with profound respect, Sure, sure, Mrs. Helen, after you. A few minutes later, Liam and Helen came back from a few meters away. Then, Mila suddenly said, Vice Principal Liam, may I borrow a few minutes to talk to you as well? Liam looked at Mila. He sure didn't want to reject her either. Of course, of course. In a few minutes, Liam followed Mila back as he wiped his forehead with a handkerchief. Jacob looked at Kathy, trying to guess what was going on. Jacob assumed she had already learned about him being her old friend. However, he had no idea what she thought about this. Just like him, Kathy was wondering what Jacob's thoughts were on it as well. They were both lost and confused. Sophie looked around, trying to analyze the situation. She knew that something was going on between them, yet she didn't know where exactly the problem was. She felt a bit jealous, but she didn't want to admit it. She felt like she would sound bratty if she complained about Jacob talking to other girls. I still need to tutor Soph today, so I'll pass on the dinner, Jacob said abruptly. Everyone, including Walter and Grandma, was surprised at Jacob's decision. You haven't seen Kathy in so long, Jacob. Don't you want to catch up with her? Grandma asked. She's my classmate, and I have lots of time to catch up with her, Jacob answered. Grandma and Ray were both surprised at Jacob's words. However, they could tell from Kathy's facial expression that he was telling the truth. In that case, Jacob is coming with us. Principal Liam, come along with your granddaughters. It's my treat, Dracon said. Walter didn't want to fight over Jacob with Dracon. He nodded. Okay, then. You can eat with Ray's family tomorrow. When the two groups of people were about to leave, Sophie, who stood beside Helen, finally opened her mouth after being silent. Um, Kathy, I would like to talk with you for a bit as well. It was to Kathy's surprise. However, she still nodded. The two of them walked a few meters away from the crowd in front of everyone's gaze. They talked facing each other with no emotions reflected whatsoever. The two girls came back after a little while. Sophie said to Dracon, Come on, Dad, let's go for dinner. Ray looked at Kathy with a questioning look, but she only smiled lightly and said to Walter, Let's leave for dinner, too. Um, yes. Walter nodded and waved goodbye to Dracon and the others. The two groups of people left through two aisles. Jacob was beside Sophie. He wanted to ask what she said to Kathy, but he tried his best to hold it back. Liam and Dracon both parked on the other side of the stadium. They started their cars and left the campus. Liam had Jade and Julia in his car, while Helen, Jacob, and Sophie were in Dracon's car. Sophie kept her mouth shut on the way to the restaurant. Her bright eyes reflected the brilliantly illuminated city, and no one could tell what was on her mind. Helen smiled at Jacob in comfort, but secretly her eyebrows twisted in worry. The restaurant was in the core of downtown. The seven of them sat around a table. This time, instead of sitting on both sides of Jacob, Jade and Julia sat on one side of him while Sophie sat on his other side. The topic was mostly about the sisters. They asked about their lives and if they had adapted to their new environment. 
Jacob could sense Dracon was paying a lot of attention to the sisters and listening carefully. This dinner also turned into a welcome dinner for them. After dinner, Liam took the sisters to Dracon's house. They seemed to have more important issues to discuss. After arriving, Dracon and Liam went up to the attic on the third floor. They even put on a soundproof array formation. Jacob noticed the seriousness in their looks. He knew that there must have been some tension in the clan lately. However, instead of asking, he went to Sophie's room to help her with her homework. As usual, the sisters were happy as long as they could be by Jacob's sides. So, they went to the room beside Sophie's room to rest. An hour later, Liam and Dracon's secret meeting came to an end. Liam went downstairs with a serious look. He called over the sisters and prepared to head back home. Jacob also walked out of Sophie's room. Come back with me, Jacob. You can stay at my place and I can give you a ride to college tomorrow. Let's not bother the king, Liam said to Jacob. Okay, Jacob nodded in agreement. It made sense to catch a ride with Liam instead of Dracon going out of his way to drop him off. Yeah, stay with Elder Liam tonight. I need to do some decorating with my place, Dracon said. Jacob nodded. Just take care. Dracon laughed and patted Jacob on his shoulder. We are fine. Just go with Elder Liam. Then he stopped and said to Liam, Can Soph stay with you tonight as well? Sure, not a problem. I will take good care of Miss Soph, Liam said immediately. Dracon went into Sophie's room and talked to her for a bit. Then she walked out of her room with a small overnight bag hitched to her shoulder. Let's go. Liam walked downstairs and drove away with the four of them. Episode 140 a lightning cultivation technique. There were city lights at night that looked like floating lanterns through the car window. Jade and Julia sat on each side of Jacob as they each looked to their side of the window. The light reflected on their faces through the window as the car passed by. They looked very beautiful and elegant under the light. The sisters' beauty was beyond words. Sophie, however, sat in the passenger seat with her hands holding onto her bag, falling asleep. Elder Liam, is something going to happen soon? Jacob finally couldn't hold it back anymore. No need to worry. It's just that we have heard some important people from the South Atlantic are coming here this time. Hence, we need to do some preparations. Liam answered as he gazed into the traffic flow ahead. About half an hour later, the vehicle entered a high-end residential area of the city. When they drove into the underground garage of Liam's building, he woke Sophie, who was soundly asleep with her bag in her arms. Then, the five of them took the elevator up to his apartment. There were two apartments on each floor. Although it was not as quiet as Sophie's house, it was still a pretty decent place. Liam opened the door and guided them inside. Jacob noticed the exquisite interior design of the apartment. There was even a small water fountain at the entrance, which brought a very elegant sensation. It was a big three-bedroom apartment with tasteful furniture and all sorts of artifacts around the world. It must have been very comfy for Jade and Julia to stay here, too. This is my room. Jade and Julia are sharing that room, and you and Ms. Soph can stay in this one, Liam said as he pointed at each room. Sophie was still a little drowsy with the bag in her arms, but she immediately blushed when she heard Liam's words. 
I'm not sleeping in the same room as him, she said as she got embarrassed in front of these almost strangers. Liam laughed. Then Jacob will probably have to stay on the couch. No problem, Jacob nodded. The couches in Liam's living room were even bigger than the ones at Sophie's place, so there was definitely enough space for him to sleep on. Miss Soph, you must be tired. Please go to bed, Liam said to Sophie. Sophie just made a sound as an acknowledgement as she sleepily walked to the room assigned to her. Jade, Julia, and Jacob, you guys should rest too, Liam said before going back to his room to work on some other things. Go rest now. You guys don't have to keep me company, Jacob said to the twins. Okay. The sisters answered at the same time before they went back to their room hand in hand. Their heads were close together as they were busy talking to each other. They are so close, Jacob sighed as he watched them leave. Then he sat on the couch with his legs crossed and started to cultivate the sword shadow scroll. Jacob felt more of nature essence here than on the outside. All the five elements were abundant, especially the water element. He opened his eyes to check out the decor of the room. The more he looked, the more ingenious it appeared to him. Every single thing in the room was there for a reason. The fountain at the entrance, in particular, functioned as the core of the water element. From there, the water elements gathered in the living room through the structure of the apartment. The array formation here was more substantial than the one at Sophie's house. The couch and the tea table were all of enormous sizes. It looked like it was a usual meeting place for the elders. Jacob closed his eyes again and started to absorb the five elements in the room. The key to cultivating the Sword Shadow Scroll was to gather all five elements at the same time. Any imbalance would cause failure in leveling up. Because of this, if the elements were to be absorbed at the same time with the same speed, Jacob's realm would be very stable. The five elements could benefit and counter one another at the same time. The advantage of the Sword Shadow Scroll was that other techniques wouldn't be able to counter it in the later stages of cultivation, but it was able to counter other techniques. However, a technique like this was extremely difficult to cultivate. Some might say that it was an idealized technique that could never be adequately cultivated. The initial stages of it were unbearably slow. Therefore, most cultivators would give it up long before the benefits could be realized. However, in Dracon and the others' opinion, this technique could help Jacob build up his foundation. Even if he had to switch to another one in the future, it would still benefit him. Jacob lost track of time, and he suddenly heard the door to the bathroom opening. It could have been around half an hour. He decided to head to the bathroom to take a shower before going to bed. Once inside, he picked up a brushing cup and noticed there were two toothbrushes in it, a red one and a green one. These must be Jade and Julia's brushes. How careless is Elder Liam? He has lived alone for so long and isn't capable of taking care of people. He knows that I came with nothing, yet he didn't think of getting a toothbrush out for me, Jacob thought. No wonder when Jade and Julia first came, Liam didn't even think of buying them some modern clothes. They were still in their ancient-looking outfits when they went to school. It was Helen who purchased the clothes they had now. Jacob understood that Liam was very busy, so he didn't want to disturb him with such a little thing. After the nice shower, he got back into his clothes since Liam didn't give him any clean pajamas to change into. Jacob went back to his couch to cultivate in the same position. Jacob didn't realize when Jade and Julia left their room to go brush their teeth and shower. They came back out after a while and noticed Jacob still sitting in the same position as before. Master is concentrating so well, Jade whispered with admiration. Yeah, but don't you think he will benefit more if we tell him the profound secret? Julia asked thoughtfully. You're right. Jade then turned to Jacob and called out, Um, Master? 
Jacob's concentration was broken by the soft call, and he opened his eyes to find the sisters standing in front of him with a fidgety smile. Oh, I'm sorry I didn't see you guys there. What's up? He asked them, without getting mad for interrupting his cultivation. I just wanted to tell you that there are actually some profound secrets with the sword shadow scroll you chose. Jade started talking. Jacob got confused as General Arthur hadn't mentioned any such thing, so he asked them, What profound secrets? Do you know what the purest five elements will become when they are mixed? Jade asked Jacob. I don't know. Jacob shook his head as he wouldn't pretend to know something that he didn't. Lightning, Jade said. Oh, you mean... Jacob suddenly understood a little. The so-called super element is actually lightning, created by the gathering of the five elements. Your sword shadow scroll is rather a lightning cultivation technique than a sword cultivation technique. It is not a technique of the dragon tribe. They may have acquired it from somewhere, but they have no idea that this technique needs to be cultivated with the lightning. Jade lightly smiled at Jacob and said,